Welcome back to Shabby Shack Studio friends as we get creative with our September journal pages. So whether you are a journaler or you are a watercolour fan, whatever you're here for, or just a little bit of vintage, just being creative, um, you've got it all this month. But uh, lashes and lashings of watercolour um, and our creative energies. And I really do create these pages with you, I swear um, you'll see me kind of really making it up as I go along. And as I share you the story with you, you I'm sure you're sure going to have a laugh that um, I do change things as I go along. Um, I honestly look at the piece as I create um, and it always comes from the crazy, the crazy recesses of my imagination. Um, I really do look at it as I go along and then decide to do something or not to do something or whether I'm loving it or, or whatever it is. Um, but this month was a little bit different. I was, I was really struggling. I was so busy at work, um, teaching, and I was struggling to find my joy and just to stop and, and, and just create for me with no brief, um, just to spend some time with myself and, um, and be creative with you guys. So I really do miss, I had, I've been so busy. I barely had time to to do a video to share with you guys and, and it really does mean the world to me when you guys pop some comments below and I know that you've created along with me. It's really like having you in the studio with me. So after I created these sweet little gift card um, tutorial um, that has been popular, thank you, um, I decided to carry on the theme, the white, loose white blooms and create my cover page because it just really felt that that was the message that I needed to see for September. And as you can see, I mean, there's no fancy brush strokes. There's a simple sketch just so that spatially I know how this is going to sit on the page. And then it's just me and my watercolors and my, um, my brush that I picked up when I was overseas on holiday, um, my like literally two, two euro brush. Um, which is a sweet acrylic that has a nice fat belly that holds lots of water and pigment and a nice sweet tip like this one so I can get the details and things in there. And then I let my colours um, really do their thing. I pop them on the palette but then I let them mix in purposely and I love how they muddy up and um, how the gold, even the same with the, with the, um, with the golds, the mustard, the yellow okra, how when it blends with the browns and um, lots and lots of water that is just the perfect palette for these blooms um, and look I always always intended to to come back in with um, a pigment liner at the end once this had dried and add some more detail in there. I will add that um, I tried a new paper this month so that was another thing another challenge that I decided to face, you know, when you're feeling uncertain and stressed, <laughs> just throw something else in there <laughs> to worry about. But it did, it did throw me for a loop for a minute because it's also windy here, so things aren't drying the same way they normally do in this super hot Queensland, Australia climate. So I found that water sat on the top longer, which means it's hard to gauge your colour because if you are a watercolour fan, you know that you lose at least 30% of that colour saturation when it dries. Um, so it was hard to gauge that because I do tend to paint quite quickly. Um, so that was a trick, but I was also that this one is a medium tooth and it's a 180 GSM. So I'm used to painting on a more textured card and on a thicker card. So all of these things were just challenges this month, but um, I just pushed through and I really do recommend that you paint through the ugly. You don't, you try to run with it a little bit, you give yourself some grace um, because you may find at the end that you love it. And I'm really happy with how this turned out for me. It, it was exactly the kind of thing I was looking for and wanting to do and that I love. Um, it has the fav, you know, that looseness that I adore and I just feel that the blooms had that real character like um, they would be in nature. So for me it suited, um, but like looking at it now with you here, I mean I can see that you're thinking oh, there's a lot of colour going on, a lot of um, blending, and but I knew that um, that was all going to look different when it had dried. Um, but I do, I was having fun with this terracotta pot as well because I do really love that, you know, they're outside and they've got a little bit of verdigris and they've got weather and they've got aging and, and for me, one of my favourite things to paint. So, um, 
really really enjoyed this entire process in the end and was super super happy with how it came out. Okay, so you can see me really having a play here with the terracotta pot, truly one of my favourite things to paint. Um, I just love that it would be dirty or it would be weathered or whatever it would be. Um, and then when I created this, the, the actual base, I was thinking it could be on like a tablecloth or it could be a larger pot that's in like a um, terrace. So I really was kind of not thinking or too clearly of it being one or the other. And I actually really love how that tiled look came out, which is sweet. And I always, always intended to add ink to this one. So I wanted to play with that loose style and do the same with my ink. Um, and again, if you follow me on socials, you'd see that this is so my style here. Um, so if this is you, you found the right place, you found your tribe. So I was really having such a lovely time um, with my adding the ink in and um, staying faithful to that loose bloom style and just adding a little bit of extra detail in there and a little bit of air, a little bit of additional white space um, and really kind of enhancing those differences. So what you can actually see at the moment in front of you, this took a little bit longer to dry. So this, this still had a fair bit of drying left to do. And it really does make a big difference um, when you see it dry. It looks so much different because that color is really, the color palette really does uh, mute as it dries. But I did find another challenge on this was that it's winter here. So it took longer for the paint to dry and then thus, you know, it kind of took longer for me to see if I was going to be happy with the final piece. So there you go. And I also wanted to add um, a nice little quote with that. And seriously, when I found this one, how right was that for me um, to remind me that I should be patient with myself because nothing in nature blooms all year. And so perfect. Um, perfect match. So my month at a glance, um, I decided to do on just the one page this month instead of doing it across a dual page spread like I normally do. Um, still plenty of room for me to add all the details that I need to do. Um, and this one is actually uh, sketched on to one of my favorite card stocks. And this is a 250 GSM, it's quite a thick weight, but it's a very smooth finish. Um, it's not a watercolour paper, um, but I do use this for so many things, in, including for packaging and all kinds of things. It comes in this lovely white, um, which is a little bit off-white. It comes in a brown, kind of craft paper brown. It comes in a grey and it comes in the black that you see throughout all of my journals. Um, and then I just put a simple sketch on um, just so that I knew how everything was going to sit and make sure that my all my days of the week were going to fit in and all that kind of thing. And then I decided to stick with my theme um, and just add kind of a little, um, a little garden at the bottom. Um, I could be a little shelfy to have all your little plants and things on. And then a simple word, word just bloom. Um, so this is always a favorite with me. Flowers are super popular here on the channel, um, but so are those kind of budget conscious supplies. So I'm always happy to try out um, new supplies. These are not things that are gifted to me. Um, these are things that I literally choose myself for the cost um, and the quality reason. And then I share them with you if I feel that they're, you know, they're a good, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly, um, which is why I was saying about um, the paper for the cover is I wasn't sure to begin with. I wasn't sure I was going to love it because it just felt so much thinner um, than I had used before and the texture was different. However, it ended up being just the perfect, lovely crisp white. The texture is perfect. The, the weight of it was, was wonderful for my gift card series. So um, I couldn't have wanted um, a different or a better finish. Um, and honestly, I'll gift these little gift cards when I'm finished creating them. Um, I'll give them to some friends. 
and um, I'll do so proudly. So I'm pretty happy with how that happened and I'll use this paper again and definitely buy it again because I really was just impressed with how lovely it worked with um, the mix of watercolour and pigment too. So there you go. And again, if you turn it over, no ghosting. So you know I'm a big fan of no ghosting because I don't want to have um, a paper that I can only use one side of. Not good for the environment, not good for my pocket. Anyway, back to this one. It's a different paper. Um, you see it a lot. And this was just a simple um, idea. And I always intended to add watercolour to this one as well. So stay tuned if that's something you would like to see. And this is not a watercolour paper. So the watercolour dries differently on it. But I really love how it does. So when I add in a little bit of wet on wet, um, I find it holds the colour really nicely and gives these nice little pops and accents of colour. So it was, it was fantastic, really, really um, worked well and I'm happy with the size of it this month because I know that I will be due um, a couple of weeks off in September for um, the student break and I'm not going to be scheduling every minute of my days. I'm actually going to try to spend some time with my family um, and with you guys here on the channel um, to stop the over overwhelm for term four, which is, you know, the crazy lead into Christmas and all of that. Um, and speaking of Christmas, have some big plans, so stay tuned.
And here you see the watercolour on the non-watercolour cardstock. Um, and it does look sweet. The colour pops, like the leaves. You can see where I added a little bit of extra oomph on the leaves. And I love that it holds the colour. So cute. Um, again, pigment liners and the watercolours work so well together. And just a little reminder on my little shelfie there to bloom and be kind to myself. Okay, and then I literally just turned that page over, um, as I promised, no ghosting. And I am going to use watercolour on this one as well, like you can see in front of you, um, keeping with the loose white blooms. And I'm going to add these little Polaroid um, days of the week. Um, my first thought was like, how fantastic would it be to put a little um, story of what's happened in the day? Um, but then as I'm creating this, I'm thinking, you know what, I need to do something like this when I'm on holiday and just make the journal for the days that I'm away and then dedicate some time to sit down and be creative, just a little bit of time to go away and be with me and create a little scene or a sketch or anything that is going to make me think or remember things that have happened on the holiday um, and with just a smile. So I think that this would make the most amazing journal um, for when you've been traveling. A little heads up that I actually did go back in, so you will see in the final image, and added a few more flowers. Uh, I just felt like it needed more flowers in the meadow, so I did do that. Um, but I didn't do that until after I um, used my beautiful vintage typewriter and put in the days of the week. And because this overlaps from August to September, I put in um, the date as well um, so that I would remember when I'm flowing between my months. Um, and I think I need to have some kind of competition to name my beautiful vintage typewriter. And I did actually, uh, my wonderful husband um, refurbished this. So she's an original oldie um, and I've just replaced her ribbon. And I shared an image today on my Instagram and my Facebook of what I did with that ribbon. Um, and I know that most people would just throw it in the bin, but the ink's dried out on it. So really essentially what you've got is this just glorious ribbon that is full of stories and character and history. I mean, can you imagine the stories and the letters and, and all the things that have been typed with that ribbon? Um, so it feels like it needs to stay in my home and in my life and, and in my memories um, so that they live on. And I shared an idea that I had um, with you. I'm not going to tell you unless you want to pop over and have a look yourself. But I'm actually going to do a little reel um, showing what I've done with that and sharing a little bit of my process um, on what I created. So that will be fun. And that ribbon is another little um, 
spoiler alert, is going to feature in some of my Christmas stuff this year. So um, I have heaps of plans already, so I really need to get started in my break because my next break will be much closer to Christmas, uh, my next term break as well. So stay tuned for hopefully lots of more videos and me making sure I have time for that joy. And then we turn over and go back to that watercolour paper that we were first hating and now loving. And we sit down and start playing with colour, um, which if you've been here a minute, you'll know is one of my favourite pages of all, the colour palette. I selected a few of my favourites, uh, the yellow okra, burnt sienna, mixed in with a little bit of deep red um, to create that lovely red earth in the centre. And then um, my sap green, and of course with a you know hefty helping of some of my favourite browns, my burnt sienna, burnt umber, sepia, even seeping into that green um, that you can see there on the left, my palette, um, and just allowing those colours to play together and um, to see what I create. And I was definitely trying to get myself to be a little bit more patient, so you can see me flipping back and forth between the colours um, and allowing things to dry a little bit more um, and I did decide to just embrace this paper and that doesn't dry as quick in this season um, and maybe just the style that it is and allow it to be and uh, just work with it instead of working against it. This page always kind of embraces a whole lot of my favourites, my um, hand topography um, that I always create and just how I feel it, make it a little bit looser, a little bit straighter, a little bit curlier, um, how I shade it, sometimes I'll fill it in so it's a block colour, sometimes I'll leave it um, with just a black outline, uh, whatever takes my fancy, whatever feels right in on that page or in that moment. Um, I do actually come in and create a little bit of a landscape in just a moment as well and that was totally a leap of faith because I just wasn't sure whether I was going to kind of tape the edges on that one and make it look more like a Polaroid or just, um, or even what I was going to create. I was really thinking kind of like a little little scene. Um, but I, I, like you can see, there's no pencil sketches kind of telling me where I'm going to add hills or valleys or flowers or anything at all. Um, so I really just let myself be free um, and played with the layers um, and the paint and just let it go on how it did and as it dried I decided from then just what I felt it needed so I think that's a little bit of a lesson in life um, in a lot of ways that sometimes if we have to work so hard for something to come together either it's not meant to be or you, re you really really decide that this is something you want and you dig in your heels and you make it happen so um, I think it's great for us to sometimes think, is this worth the fight? Is this worth the time? Um, do I really care about this tomorrow or in a week's time or a month's time? Or is this something that I feel is going to be life changing and super important and is absolutely um, deserving of my invested time and energy? Um, so I'm going all in. So I think that's, a, that's this is really um, good for me. And it's, it is something that I do. I, I do decide consciously sometimes like just letting this go it's not really that important and other times I'm like no nah, this is this is the one fight for this and I'm not saying it always comes together but at least I'm happy with that decision and um, it does free up my overthinker brain that sometimes you know what you're just living free rent in my mind over something that is just not worth it um, and this includes kind of extends to people that drive you a little bit crazy and that are overly dramatic and needy and attention seeking. Think about it. Should they stay, do they deserve space in your brain and in your day and in your you know, anxiety and stress <clears throat> and how it helps you um, enjoy your day or, or struggle or you'll end up with a headache or a migraine from it? Is it do they really deserve that or they really not and you need to make a conscious decision and a conscious choice to make yourself and, and tell yourself this is so not worth it. So um, definitely a big one for me I struggle with allowing people to um, affect my mood and how I'm feeling um, when they really don't deserve to do that and to be there. So um, 
love to hear what you think guys think um, I really do so pop something below if um, that resonates with you
um, to catch all those um, lines and, and add some more definition. I think it's obvious that I really enjoyed uh, creating this page. Um, it, my little little landscape turned out to be sweet and I wanted to add the layers in. Um, my swatch, I'm super happy with how my swatch came out. Um, not too much ruler on this one because I wanted it to be um, kind of sketchy and fun. The same with the um, little landscape, the little Polaroid, and I've added some clouds in there as well. Um, I'm going to come in and add my font in here, which is always freehand. Um, my brushes, my pen. This is pretty much what my desk looks like, and it's always a pretty mess um, in my studio with all my little bits and pieces there. My hand-made uh, ribbon that you can see at the top there, which says, loves me, loves me not. Um, so this is part of my gifting range. What did I tell you? I've got this passion for vintage and handmade and, and the unique and I just think this is just lovely for gifting, weddings um, or even just for anything at all um, and I do find it is quite popular and I even have I had a couple of stockists that, um, that agree with me and, and find that their uh, lovely clientele um, love it too. So there you can see, um, I'm just going to add a couple of little birds in here at the clouds. I just think they need it. A couple of little sweet virtual ticks. You could do this. I think that that's one thing that you see here on the channel is if I can do this, you can do this. And last but not least is my sweet little page keeper. Um, now you'll see these every month because this, they're made slightly higher than my standard pages. So it defines each of the months for me in my handmade journal. Um, it makes it easy for me to switch back and forth if I'm looking at, you know, when I did something or when I need to do something or whatever it is. Um, they're literally made with scraps. Um, it's all about budget and sustainability here um, that I don't like to throw away good quality pieces and this cardstock um, is lovely. So 
make something with what you have. So I always end up using my scraps for all kinds of things. Um, if you do purchase anything from my online store, I always include a thank you card. Um, and I'd purposely leave it blank other than saying thank you so that then you can give that on to someone that you love as well, um, which I think is a nice, um, a nice thought and a nice bonus and makes your life a little bit easier as well. Um, this this cardstock is always a favourite, um, just adding on with my white poplar um, gel pen there. Um, and before I go, I just want to say thank you so much um, for being here guys. As always, it means so much. Um, any comments or questions or if there's something I've missed or you need to clarify, um, drop a question below. Um, otherwise, you can go and get in contact, like I said, on my website jump over and have a look at the vlog. There's extra content on there um, for you as well. My bonus printables, all the fun stuff. Um, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of color here um, and I hope that this, just like it did for me, it colors your day happy and your month of September wonderful. Um, thanks for being here, see you soon.